Okay, so the next step we said is that instead of pre using a predefined algorithm, we're going to um, create a spiral, but in this case, by transformations, right? Not expressions, but transformations. And the difference here is that we're going to be finding the spiral incrementally using an algorithm that is composed of a couple of different uh, elements within the processing part of the algorithm. So here's where we're going, right? We're going to have a set of objects that are also going to uh, result in uh, kind of giving us a spiral pattern uh, from all the objects. But um, you can see here that we're working with uh, rectangles, and it could be really anything at that uh, in terms of what the geometry is. And the way that we're going to uh, get that is that we're going to use transformations. Primarily uh, for today, we'll be using affine transformations. And um, all that means is that it is a function which maps geometry from one context to another. So if you've used the move command in Rhino or Grasshopper, you've done a transformation. And that move really is a function. And it takes the geometry from one location to another, or one orientation to another, or one rotation to another, right? So all of our transformations are really doing a simple mapping from one context to the next. So here's an example of a couple of those affine transformations, right? Uh, move, which is also called translation sometimes. We move this geometry along a translation vector, resulting in this geometry. Or we could rotate this geometry about this rotation point a certain uh, number of degrees to get the other object, or vice versa. Okay, so that's great, and we're probably very familiar with using transformations when we're modeling and also using Grasshopper. Again, these are like move, scale, rotate, etc. Uh, so the uh, transformations can also be used in combination, or we can create compound transformations, which are really just accumulated basic transformations. So if we start to say, okay, we want to move, but we also want to rotate, and perhaps we also want to scale, we're now creating a compound transformation that results in uh, some more interesting uh, forms and geometries. So here we have this kind of uh, example of like a fern, right? A fern leaf or a fern stem where we have one object, this red, that's bound by this red rectangle that is being translated, mirrored, and sheared to create, uh, and do, we're doing that multiple times, to create this array of leaves that results in this overall pattern, right? So this is the result of a compound transformation of this object here. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, execute this exercise, all right? Again, if you wanted a sneak peek, you could open 1-1. You can see that there's not that much uh, to this file, uh, but it's going to be a great way to uh, lead in the conversation about how we're working with our algorithms. So while we're here, I'm going to do the same, uh, same thing that I did before. I'll save this as my working file. I'll go ahead and delete this part. Okay. So... Uh, let's talk about what we would actually be doing in Rhino if we were wanting to uh, execute this logic of uh, creating a spiral, right? So uh, let's say that I create created a rectangle, right? And you can choose any geometry, circle, ellipse. It's uh, a little bit easier to see with something that is longer than it is tall. And I'm going to draw a rectangle from the center of, of my world coordinate system, the origin. Off to the right, maybe something like this. Okay, so if I wanted to create a spiral of rectangles, how might I do it? Well, um, I've, it's going to be a little bit difficult for me to say, okay, well, I have this one. I'm going to copy it to here. Then I'm going to rotate it, let's say, five degrees, right? Then I'm going to copy this one 
from there to there and rotate it five degrees, right? And keep going and going and going, right? But the essential uh, idea of layering up a couple of simple transformations, if we kept going, if we had enough time, we could keep going and um, get a spiral of rectangles. Okay, so I'm going to delete these last two that I made, and we just want one rectangle. Uh, and this is what we're going to use to uh, develop this file. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to get this rectangle into Grasshopper. And so this file can work with um, any other type of input, right? We can do um, a surface, a line, a box, etc. We're just going to use the generic geometry parameter from params geometry, geometry here. This will take in any type of geometry from my so let's drop that into the canvas, and we're going to right-click, set one geometry. And I've already got it selected, so it filled this container with that geometry. But if you don't, make sure you select it and hit OK. And then let's go ahead and label this. Um, so I'm going to group my object, right-click on the, uh, the group, and this is going to be my input of my geometry to transform. Okay. All right, now I need to define what I want to do with it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start by um, looking at the move, right? All of our transforms are gonna be located here under the transform tab. And here is our set of affine transformations, right? Um, and, and in Grasshopper, they're broken down further into Euclidean transformations as well. So affine is our scale, shear, orient, and Euclidean includes our move, rotate, etc. So let's grab the move object. I'm going to move some geometry along a translation vector. Okay, well, the geometry that we're going to move, um, that's pretty simple, right? That's going to be this object going into, into G. Okay, and now we have to define a translation vector. So let's go to the vector tab, and we want to move this up in the y direction. All right, so let's find the unit y object from vector, vector. All right, and if we connect this, it will work. It will move it one unit up in the y direction. But we want to have control over that, right? So we want to define what our f input will be for this unit y vector um, beyond just a value of 1. So let's go ahead and grab a slider from the params input tab, number slider, and we're going to edit this slider so that it can go between, let's say, 0 and 5.0. Right? I think I only need two decimal places for this, so that looks good. Well, here we'll call this the vector length, v length. So if I connect that to f, now I have control over how far my rectangle moves. All right? That's probably not too exciting for you, but let's go ahead and take a look at what we get as a result of our move object. So I'm going to drop a panel into the canvas. And we see that there is some translated geometry, which, of course, is a polyline curve from our initial rectangle. So now it's up here, but it's a polyline curve. But let's also take a look at what the move object has coming out of the bottom of it. It also has the transform information. So here it says move 0, 5. Right? So that's telling us it's moving in the y direction 5 units. Okay, so this is something that's uh, a more recent um, development within Grasshopper uh, that also gives us the transformation information. Notice that we have the, this little spiral arrow um, icon next to where it says transform. That's giving us an indication of a certain type of, um, of data that we can work with inside of Grasshopper. So the transform is just the information that is telling us how to transform uh, an object, right? 
And interestingly enough, if we don't have anything going into G, we can still create the transformation information just by giving the rest of the object's inputs some values.